Okay. So the first tool we'll look at is SEMrush. And we're going to use this as an example for um, identifying and analyzing information about a competitor's website that could inform your keyword strategy. So if you want to check this out yourself, again, this is a paid tool. You can go to simrush.com. There's a QR code here for Simrush as well. We're not an affiliate. I'm just trying to show you all the tools we use internally. And um, yes to Allison, I would say Simrush is my close second favorite of the paid tools. I have a personal slight preference for Ahrefs, that A-H-R-E-F-S dot com. But as a business, we use a lot of the API features to integrate our reporting and to streamline some of the work that our team does. And Simrush has a more robust API. So we made a decision to use that platform. Ahrefs is very close in terms of its feature sets, though. My personal preference is Simrush. They're actually a publicly traded company, so probably the most stable of all of those solutions. Um, Ahrefs is, is another one that I'm very fond of. Uh, probably my least favorite is Moz. If everyone's, if anyone's learned or heard of that tool in the past, um, the reason it's my least favorite as a practitioner is the data they have in that system doesn't seem to be quite as robust as companies like Simrush and Ahrefs. Thanks for that question, Allison. All right, so let me stop sharing and I'll get a uh, Simrush pulled up and we can take a tour through that together. For an example, we'll go ahead and stick with that theme that we are a gym and we are trying to figure out an SEO strategy for our health or fitness club. So one thing, if anybody's driven around town ever, you probably know that Planet Fitness is a very popular large scale gym chain across the US. And so if you were a local gym, you may want to look at a company like that to try to figure out what are they getting traffic for? What are people searching for? And can we mirror some of their strategies? So what's really cool about a tool like Simrush or Ahrefs or Moz is that you can take somebody like Planet Fitness and just plug their website into this tool. And what this company is doing is they're essentially using all of their scraping of Google and all of their AI on the semantics and language that they have inside of their platform to help identify some high level metrics about this website. But what's more most interesting to us as SEO analysts is that they also provide us query data. So what this information represents when it gets loaded here is these are all of the things people are searching for where Planet Fitness as a website shows up. And you'll see some of these metrics like we talked about before, estimated search volume here, Keyword difficulty as a scale of 1 to 100. CPC is that cost per click data from the paid search auction. And so as a, as a marketer, when you're doing this research, the best practice is to review all of your competitors and analyze the things that they are ranking for. Things like Planet Fitness, gym membership near me. You can even do things like filter out certain things you don't want to see. So what I was saying is that there's any specific filters you want to apply, for instance, in this case, I don't really care about seeing all of the keywords for Planet Fitness. That's a different flip brand. I'm not going to produce content about Planet Fitness on my website. So I can even filter some of this information to get rid of some of their branded queries. And then this becomes a lot more interesting and actionable to me if I were operating a gym and I wanted to invest in an SEO strategy. Now I can see that they're showing up for variations of gyms near me, gym membership language, fitness center near me. And as you scroll down, you, they also show up pretty well for, for dad bod, which, um, which I guess I could probably show up pretty well for too, which is funny. But the, the exercise that you want to do as an analyst is review some of this information and try to find things that are relevant to you. And what you can see here is you'll be able to see all of these queries, but also how many people search for them and how difficult it is to rank. And so with this information, you can start to get rid of the guesswork and just pick things that you think are relevant for your business. What this tool will also let you do is do an exercise like that at scale. So one of the things that this tool does very well is that it also allows you to do gap analysis. So what that is, is that you're looking at a number of different websites and you want to know where do they rank where I don't show up right now. And that can be a good way to quickly identify a subset of all these different search queries that could be relevant to your business.
So for instance, if I was trying to analyze, I have a fake website in there, but I want to look at planet fitness. I want to look at crunch.com. I could put in additional gyms in my local market. Maybe I want to check out what gold's gym is, is showing up for. And what a tool like that will do is not only analyze all of their keyword data, but it will also analyze your own keyword data and then show you some of the common things that they all rank for, but your website doesn't rank for. So if you had to do one thing, I would, I would recommend doing some basic gap analysis because what this does is essentially you're using the investment someone else has made in their SEO to short cycle how quickly you can find relevant keywords. And so if I were to do this exercise for my gym, I might see it, the things that are interesting to me is people are talking about heat workouts or hit workouts, the high intensity interval training. Maybe that's something that I want to target for my business. Or you might see things like core workouts show up. And so this is a good way to initially identify some of those seed keywords. Once you get done identifying a healthy set of those initial keyword targets, then the question becomes, what are all the different variations of those keyword targets that we can use? And there's a second tool I'll show you next, which is a completely free tool that is really cool for looking at some of that information. So let me get that pulled up here. So like we mentioned before, so someone asked a question in the chat about pricing. SEMrush tends to be fairly expensive. I think their basic package is about $130 a month, but I can double check. Um, there is, uh, there, the next few tools I will show you are completely free to use and they can give you some good information. We can also potentially for some of our deep dive sessions scheduled later, look at how you could use a, some free tools that Google ads has that are really designed for paid search. I can show you how to hack around some of that stuff to not pay a dollar and still get some good keyword data. So we'll, we, we can slot one of those for a future session, but thank you, Lynn.